So Apple just recently had its event where it showed off basically a slew of brand new iPhones coming to the market. The iPhone 12 and 12 Pro have a 6.1 inch display, the iPhone 12 mini at a 5.4 inch display, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max at 6.7 inches on the display. Now, conversely, already on the market, Apple has a slew of other iPhones, the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro Max models already available for purchase. So the iPhone 11 is a 6.1 inch display, the iPhone 11 Pro is 5.8 inches, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max is 6.5 inches. Now for customers upgrading from an older iPhone, probably like one or two generations back, it can be a little bit tricky to know which iPhone you should choose. Should you go for the latest and greatest iPhone 12 that are going to be hitting the market soon, or should you go for the more heavily discounted iPhone 11 brand that's already on the market? And that's exactly what we're gonna to try to break down today are the differences between the base level iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 mini versus the iPhone 11 that's on the market. So you can get a better idea of the differences between the two models or three models and see which one suits your needs. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now also just to let you know we have a separate video coming up breaking down the differences between the iPhone Pro level models so the 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max versus the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max there's some differences there we separated that into a different video so make sure you subscribe to the channel for that one it's coming up pretty soon. Now we'll start off with one of the biggest differences between the 11 and the 12 models of iPhone and Apple kind of stapled it in their presentation. It was one of the first things they talked about and that's gonna be 5G. 5G is going to be available across the slew of different iPhone 12s that are going to be hitting the market, even to the point where they brought Verizon on stage just to show you how much iPhones are gonna be supporting this wideband 5G that's going to be available for any iPhone user purchasing the iPhone 12. Now in the case of 5G it can actually become a little bit tricky because 5G is not the standard as of yet. Yet, and it probably won't be the standard for the next couple of years. So if that's going to be one of the things that are factoring in to which iPhone you purchase, then the question really is gonna come down to how long are you planning to keep your next iPhone that you buy? Some people keep iPhones for four or five years down the line. If you're one of those people that are gonna buy an iPhone this year and planning not to upgrade to another iPhone for four or five years, then you're probably gonna to wanna to factor 5G in because I believe in four or five years, 5G is going to be become sorta or close to being the standard, or at least have a more impact effect on how you use your mobile device. At that point, you're probably going to want a 5G phone and be happy that you purchased one four or five years ago. But if you're somebody that keeps your phone for just one to two years, I don't think 5G is gonna be anything near where it needs to be within that time frame. So buying a 5G phone is really not at the top priority or shouldn't be at the top priority of your list and really shouldn't factor too much into the decision you make on which phone to purchase. Now one of the places you're going to see a big kind of sort of difference in the iPhones is going to be in the camera system. On the iPhone 11 you had a twin camera setup with a dual 12 megapixel wide and an ultra wide camera. The ultra wide camera has a f 2.4 aperture and the wide camera has an f 1.8 aperture, optical image stabilization, optical 2x zoom, digital zoom up to 5x. You can shoot 4k at 60 frames per second and the front facing camera is also 12 megapixel with an f 2.2 aperture and video stabilization. Now with the iPhone 12, you're getting kind of like a slightly upgraded camera stock. So the 12 has a dual 12 megapixel camera setup, an ultra wide and a wide. The ultra wide is an f 2.4 aperture and the wide is an f 1.6 aperture with all the same image stabilizations. The biggest difference between these cameras is the fact that the 12 and the 12 mini also support Dolby Vision HDR video recording up to 30 frames per second. Now what Apple's saying is that with this recording feature, you're gonna get a wider color gambit. You're gonna be able to record some awesome video with some detail rich colors. It does remain to be seen how well this Dolby Vision HDR is gonna operate on this hardware with the chipset and the camera set itself. Either way, it is a brand new feature that's not on the 11, so it's definitely worth mentioning in this video because if if you take a lot of videos, then this probably will factor into which 
camera system you purchase. So of course the processors have also gotten a bump on the 11, you have that A13 bionic chipset. On the 12, you're gonna have the A14 bionic chipset on that five nanometer processor with the 11.8 billion transistors that are in the A14 bionic chip. So it has a six core CPU with two high performance cores. The natural engine has 16 cores instead of eight for significantly faster performance. And the machine learning acceleration is at 70% faster than what's on the iPhone 11. Now, ironically, processing power is one of those categories, again, that's very subjective to what you currently have. So if you're upgrading from an older iPhone that's two, three, four generations back, the A13 Bionic chip is going to definitely be a lot faster than what you currently have and thus may suit your needs just fine. But if you're upgrading from a newer iPhone, the A14 may be what you're looking for. Again, processing power is subjective. Fast is going to be fast, really depending on where you're coming from. So in this case, you're really gonna have to evaluate what exactly you're doing on your phone, how much speed you really do need, because you may not need to jump to the latest and greatest chips. You just may need to jump to something that's better than the one that you currently have. Now the displays have also gotten a bump from the liquid Retina HDR 6.1 inch LCD display display on the 11 to the 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display on the 12. And the mini is gonna be a 5.4 inch display. And now both the 12 and 12 mini now support HDR with 1200 nits of max brightness. And one of the other things that they kind of showed is that both the 12 and 12 mini, keep in mind that the 12 and 12 mini are basically the same phone, but the mini is just smaller. So all the improvements and advancements you see on the 12, you're gonna see on the 12 mini. Apple worked with Corning to kind of make this new crystallization shield protection on their screen. They're saying the drop protection for this iPhone is going to be four times more than any iPhone that came before it. I'm sure the internet is definitely going to put that number to the test. But keep in mind that if you are a little bit more clumsier with your device, if you drop your device more often, this iPhone 12 and 12 mini is going to offer you four times more to protection for whatever that's worth. They've also upped the water resistant depth to six meters for 30 minutes versus two meters for 30 minutes on the 11. And they've also included these new accessibility for MagSafe accessories. And basically that is just a magnet that's in the back of the iPhone itself that perfectly lines up the coils with wireless charging, charging itself, and different MagSafe accessories like wallets or things that just can be magnetized to the back of your iPhone, even cases. So it does open up a new slew of different accessories you can purchase for your iPhone. It doesn't really add much to the actual functionality of the iPhone itself. But again, if this is something that's more convenient for you, it can definitely factor into your purchase versus an iPhone 12 or 11. So now the iPhone 12 and 12 mini retail for $799 and $699 respectively. And you can actually now pick up the iPhone 11 for $599, which is a $200 price difference between the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 11. Now with the overall improvements to the camera, processor, screen, the iPhone 12 does make a compelling purchase at $799, but for somebody that's upgrading from one to two generations back, the iPhone 11 is still a really fast phone with some really great cameras, an acceptable screen, and that $200 price difference. $200 can buy you a lot of things. So hopefully this video helped you kind of whittle down the differences between the 11, the 12, and the 12 mini just a little bit more. If you're looking at any of these three phones to be purchased anytime soon, hopefully this video kind of leads you in a direction of which phone is right for you. Remember, as long as you buy a phone that does everything you need it to do, you're not making a wrong decision. But if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button down below. It definitely helps out the channel with that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know when we release our next video comparing the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max and the 11 Pro, all those four phones to tell you the differences in case you're looking to purchase one of their pro level iPhones. And until then, you can check out the review we did on the iPhone 11 Pro. I'm gonna throw that up on the top there. And below that is gonna be something that YouTube believes you enjoy watching. Guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. And as always, make sure to stay safe. And until I see you next time, peace out.